and welcome to the episode seven of the Yarn Duchess podcast. This is a podcast mostly about knitting and spinning, some yarn dyeing, and uh, this, this episode I'm actually going to have some crochet to share with you. If you're a returning viewer, you probably noticed a little bit, uh, a little bit of difference um, in the appearance of my video. Um, my husband uh, bought me some new lights so that my craft room um, is a little bit brighter. I before my lights were had a yellow tone to them, and so it really affected the color of uh, the yarn that I was trying to show. So I was recording without lights and just using the natural light from my window, my one and only window. Um, but with the new lights, um, it's everything's a little bit brighter and uh, you'll be able to see truer colors uh, when I share them with you today. Um, if you're a new viewer, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. I hope that you enjoy the show. And if so, I hope that you will like and maybe even subscribe. My name is Amy and I am the Yarn Duchess and you can find me on um, as the as Duchess Fiber Arts on uh, Etsy and Fiber Crafty and um, Facebook and you can find me as the Yarn Duchess on Instagram, Ravelry and right here on YouTube. So today I'm going to start with some of my successes and fails since my last podcast or vodcast. Um, I'm going to start with a fail, <laughs> which is my um, Estonian Dreams shawl. This was heartbreaking because I just, this was such a beautiful shawl. This is still, uh, has not been um, um, blocked, but, and it's a lace shawl by, um, oh, I already did not even write that down. Um, yes, I did. Let me find it here. I might be able to share that with you. It is uh, by Judy Marples. Anyway, this was a craftsy kit that I purchased a couple of years ago. And I purchased one of the um, uh, colorways, one of the special colorways rather than their standard colors. And I should have checked the um, order when it arrived. I mean, I checked it to see that I had been I had been sent two skeins of yarn and the pattern, and I set it aside because I think I was still in the middle of moving at the time. And then um, when I decided to pull it out and start working on it, I was beginning to wonder by my second skein if I was going to have enough to finish. And as it turned out, I did not. And so I rechecked my order and it looked okay, but then I went back onto the Craftsy site and checked the, um, the uh, kit there. And the kit called for three skeins of yarn. So I contacted Craftsy and let them know what had happened and they uh, said, we'll take care of it, we'll get that out to you. And then the next day I got the email saying that that particular colorway was no longer available. So I am not able to finish this shawl. So fortunately, it is a sock yarn, a true sock yarn with uh, nylon and wool. So I will probably take this shawl apart and um, make socks. And I will find a, another um, yarn to use to remake this shawl. I don't think I'll have a problem. I have plenty of yarn to choose from. Um, so. Anyway, this is, uh, you won't be seeing this shawl in this colorway. Um, again, I would, like I said, I will be taking it apart and you'll probably see it come back as socks. So that is my craftsy fail, um, partly their fault. And this is like the one and only time so far. And I've been a, a craftsy um, client for a customer for many years. So one time and, and all of that is is uh, forgivable, I think. Anyway, my other craftsy success, and I want to thank my viewers for their comments and recommendations from my last uh, vodcast. Um, I did have some interesting suggestions that I did consider, but I think the one that made the most sense really was to go ahead and order that third skein of yarn to finish to finish the project. So that is what I did. And so I have finished my um, Harmonize shawl. And 
It has not been blocked yet, so you will see um, the shawl um, next, probably the next podcast. And I do have this much yarn left over, so plenty of yarn, as was suggested, um, to uh, make a, a matching hat or maybe some um, uh, gloves or uh, fingerless gloves or something along those lines. But anyway, so that was a, a crafty success save. Thank you very much. Oh, by the way, um, a new addition too for my uh, returning and new viewers is uh, I want to introduce you to Athena. Um, Athena has been with me for many, many years. I think I got her back when I was in high school and taking a, a home ec class. Um, I don't think that they offer home ec classes anymore. Uh, it's with the class in high school where they would teach you how to sew and and cook and uh, take care of um, um, household things like writing checks and practical stuff that they don't think they offer in school anymore. But anyway, Athena was actually a um, um, form, a dress form, and so she had adjustable uh, knobs, or so she still has them, adjustable knobs for waist and, and chest and hips, but um, like I said, it's been many, many years and uh, some of the inner workings don't work anymore. So she is now acting just as my um, mannequin. So she is wearing today um, the, uh, all right, I already forgot that one too. Let me think now. She's wearing the pavement sweater by Vera Valamaki. Um, which I finished uh, a few months back. It's still a little too warm here in Colorado to wear that sweater, but I'm hoping by next month that I will be able to. And next time you uh, come by, um, she will probably be wearing my harmonized shawl. So anyway, I just wanted to introduce her because she will be uh, with us from now on. And then uh, moving on, let me see here. I have some finished objects to share. So the first thing I want to share is my... Tweety Toes socks. So I got them both done. I think I shared the one sock with you last time. Um, this was a uh, sock, a toe-up sock. Um, then I used the pattern for the um, Hermione Everyday sock, except that I did do a German short row heel, and then I did a two by two rib at the top and then I um, did the sewn bind off. Um, I really do like the look of the partridge heel that is uh, normally goes with this uh, pattern and you know I've, I've mentioned several times my journey my previous uh, videos I have talked about my journey with socks and I was not a sock knitter up until recently and now I'm hooked on them. I will always have at least three pair of socks on my needles at any given time. And um, I will always have a sock to share uh, when you come by. So eventually I'm going to, I'm, I'm, work, I'm working on Christmas gifts right now. So my vanilla sock pattern is the toe up, three by one rib, and the German short, short row heel. Um, I'm just going to be doing those from here until Christmas just because I've got it down, it's memorized, I can do it quickly, and I'm happy with that. After the first of the year, I will probably go back to trying um, different sock patterns, and uh, I might give that uh, partridge heel a try. But anyway, uh, this was made out of the Two Guys Yarn Company. This is the BFL um, Nylon. Um, with uh, a tweed. It's uh, got the little neps in it. And I had shown, uh, voiced some concerns about the, um, the tweed just barely hanging onto the yard last time and also mentioned a halo. Well, this is a super wash um, uh, BFL, so I think that's why there was a bit of halo on it. And I think the neps also help with that. As far as where I have not worn them yet, these socks are for me. So um, I will get back to you and let you know how this yarn wears. I was watching um, Knit Girls the other day and um, Leslie was actually knitting the pavement sweater with this yarn. So I'll be curious to see how that comes out. Um, I think it's soft enough to make a nice sweater. So 
we'll see. I mean, I really love this pattern. It was simple. It was one of um, uh, a very simple pattern. It fit me well, which is always exciting when you make a garment and it fits. Um, so I will probably be making this sweater uh, multiple times using different yarns. Um, but yeah, that's, that's probably going to be my vanilla sweater too. So my next um, finished object I'm happy and disappointed with because it is a very small shawl. It came out a lot smaller than I had uh, would have preferred. This is the um, uh, Lonely Tree Shawl. And when I shared it with you last time, let me put, put this on. I mean, it's a, it's a nice, if you like small shawls, this is okay. I mean, it even came out smaller than what the picture um, online. And, you know, I'm, I'm a loose knitter, so I was kind of surprised to find this coming out as small as it did. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice scarf, but I said, I like, I like big shawls. So this is a, um, when I first brought this up, this was a free pattern on Ravelry and, um, but it's, um, let's see here. Yeah, it, it was, it was a free pattern by soft sweater. And when I went back after telling you about it, um, found out that it was on Ravelry, but now is a paid for pattern. And it's by Sylvia McFadden. And um, she um, made another shawl pattern that is this exact uh, pattern, but larger. And it's called the Elder Tree Shawl. So if you want a larger shawl, it's also, um, she has that available. It's also a paid for pattern. So since I got this one for free, um, I may go ahead and go back and get the, uh, pay for the, the larger shawl pattern just because I do want a larger shawl. So, but other than the size, I was really happy with this shawl. It's a leaf pattern. Do I have it on? Yeah, this is the front. So it's a leaf pattern. It's a triangle shawl and it has, um, um, a Pico bind off. And I, this is blocked. I just haven't um, wit woven in the ends yet. So that is the uh, Lonely Tree Shawl by Sylvia McFadden. Okay, now on to works in progress. We're just zipping along here. So I have, uh, like I said, I, I'm going to have at least three pairs of socks on my needles at all times, at least until Christmas. So my next one, uh, no big surprise for you here. This is my... Um, Zauber ball sock. I will. I I love Zauber ball. Um, you'll always find me with a Zauber ball sock on my needles. This is a yarn I think I shared with you uh, about three episodes ago. I think it was episode three, and um, I had picked this up and I thought that my daughter would like this color, and I showed her my my balls of sock yarn, and sure enough, she said I like this one. So this is her. Um, Christmas, one of her Christmas presents for this year, um, and this is um, one, once again my my vanilla sock, which is the toe up three by one rib, German short row, and then the sewn bind off. I do have the other sock on the needles, but it's only this big. But I should have this one done by the end of the week. So there's sock number one. I'll get this out of the way. Sock number two, um, I shared the um, sock blank with you. This is in my, my owl bag. Um, I shared the sock blank with you on my last episode, I believe, when I had gone to the Estes Park Wool Market. And I had said then that I didn't know how long I would be able to wait to um, try out this sock blank. And, so I didn't wait. And so what I did is I, this is how it, it's coming out. Um, very interesting striping and color changes and it's just really beautiful. What I did though was I um, dyed up um, some contrasting yarn uh, for the heel. I wanted, to, I wanted to try a contrasting toe and heel. So I did the toe and the heel and also included the cuff. So this again, vanilla sock, my vanilla sock, uh, three by one toe up 
sock with the sock blank. And here is sock number two, um, just almost uh, ready to put the heel in on that one. So that is my second sock. And then sock number three, Oh, by the way, um, all of my socks, except for the owl bag, are in my um, uh, By the Bay um, bags. And this one is actually another toe-up 3 by one um, This is actually a um, one of my dyed yarns. This is the, um, what did I call this? Magpie. This was my Magpie colorway. Um, my one of my best friends uh, picked out this ball of yarn and asked me if I would knit her some socks. So she is totally knit worthy, and uh, I'm knitting these up for her. Also, but what I did though is on my last. Oh, I'll mention now. I was going to save it for later, but I mentioned now one of the reasons that my uh, podcast is so late. I think I'm going on almost two months. I <laughs> didn't mean to go that long. But a lot of things were happening this summer. You know how it goes. But I went on the um, Denver Metro uh, yarn crawl. It's called Yarn Along the Rockies. And the crawl went from all the way up in Boulder, which was about uh, two hours away, and then all the way down to Woodland Park, which is only about half an hour from me. So um, did a lot of um, yarn shopping. Um, but I picked up this uh, Regia. Um, yarn and I thought this is a nice charcoal gray will go with a lot of the colors that I um, use for my socks and I thought it would be nice to be able to instead of dyeing up some more yarn for heels and toes I just decided to use this with uh, to do the heel and toe on this sock and then probably um, on the uh, excuse me on this yarn I'm going to have enough yarn left sorry I keep bending over out of, out of the picture but I'm going to have enough yarn left when I finish that second sock um, to probably knit some shorties or maybe even some fingerless gloves and I think that this will go nice um, as a contrast color for heels and toes or for the uh, wrist warmers anyway that is my plan for this um, Regia yarn so that is my um, third sock that I'm going to share or have shared. And then I have two other works in progress. And believe it or not, I have sweaters on my needles. I am, I am now into sweater knitting. So I picked out this pattern. This is in my larger um, um, bag that I think I shared with you last month also. But I am working on the... Ravello sweater and this is a sweater that I am making for my daughter for Christmas. So this is her other Christmas present um, I did a provisional cast on on the neck She didn't uh, like the neck being so wide and um, I thought okay I'll put on a provisional cast on and she wanted either a turtleneck or a cowl neck um, on this sweater and I thought okay, I can figure that out um, I'll, I'll, I'll find a way on YouTube University to figure it out. But then I found out that she actually includes instructions on revising the neck in her pattern. So this is the Ravello, and it is by Isabel Kramer. So I saw multiple colors on the Ravelry website for this sweater, and um, my daughter picked the ones that best... Um, illustrated how she wanted her sweater to look and this is what I ended up with so I am using this is not a craftsy kit but I am using uh, craftsy yarn this is their uh, fine highland wool uh, in a fingering weight and uh, really liked the colors that the, that this particular I, I, I like to say particular a lot this yarn comes in a lot of beautiful colors and so these are the ones that I chose for her and it's been a very easy knit. i am um, not had too many problems with it. Um, some of her instructions were a little um, confusing and I did have to send her an email asking a question about a certain part. 
So other than just the section where the, the stripes and the sleeves um, get separated out, the rest of the instructions are just very, very clear and concise, but uh, there was a little bit of, um, well, it was just a little bit difficult to work out um, when you were supposed to do certain things in just that section of the pattern. So, so far, so good. And then my final um, work in progress is my flax light sweater. And this is a sweater by Tin Can Knits and it's a free pattern. Um, the Ravello sweater was a purchase pattern on Ravelry. Um, this is my first, another first, this is my first um, pattern that I've done uh, using a Tin Can Knits pattern. And it's, um, I like, I do like that they make a pattern that will fit pretty much any size that a human being comes in. And so I can make this sweater for my husband, but I can also, if I like it, I can make it for my son and for my daughter and for myself. So anyway, once again, top down sweater, fingering weight, really easy to follow instructions. Um, if you had watched my previous videos, you knew that I was um, trying to um, find uh, or work on uh, a color for my husband's um, charger, <laughs> football chargers. Now the LA chargers used to be San Diego, so they're football chargers. But anyway, I um, was trying to get the right navy blue and then the throwback, this baby blue here is their throwback colors. And then uh, the, the gold is pretty much the same. But I thought this might be a little too busy, but I showed it to him and he says, no, he loves it. So, um, so I've been knitting away and this actually, um, I've gotten this far. It looks a little small, but I think once it's been blocked, it will, it will hopefully grow. I checked gauge, gauge is fine. So um, yeah, I'm just, I, I'm gonna double check it just cause it does worry me just a bit. But I know that once you block, it will actually add several inches onto the sweater. And uh, the other thing that I did is I decided to do a double neckline. I didn't, I thought that the, um, just the, the regular neckline was kind of, kind of flimsy, especially for uh, a guy. So I um, knitted the normal length of the neck and then I did a line of garter and then I did it again, uh, knit, stitched another inch and a half of the neck and then I will tack it down um, when I'm done. So I've separated for the sleeves and I've actually gotten down about, oh, I think three or four inches. So um, I just need to wind up another ball. And uh, I thought that um, knitting stockinette in the round would be boring and I would be you know, nodding off, but I'm actually, not having a problem with it. In fact, it makes great, uh, a great knitting project for when I'm watching um, the Rockies games. So um, yeah, so you know the end of summer is coming when the Rockies are getting down to the final weeks and preseason football is on TV. So there'll be plenty of knitting time over the next month when the two um, uh, games, the, the baseball and the football are actually overlapping each other. So every Sunday I'll be <laughs> camped in front of the TV knitting and watching football and all the rest of the nights I'll probably be watching baseball. So anyway, this, so this is the Flax Light uh, Fingering Weight uh, by Tin Can Knits. And that is it for my works in progress. So a lot of knitting has been going on. I've also been doing a lot of spinning, but I will share that with you. Um, in the next segment after um, I share my video with you from Garden of the Gods. Now, I know I've been talking about this since practically the beginning of my uh, broadcasting, um, but I've been having problems with, you know, with weather and lighting. It's just such a beautiful place that it really needs to be seen in the right light. Um, this summer, um, well, in the spring we had, you know, a lot of rain and overcast days. In the summer we had a lot of smoke from all of the fires. And we had a lot of hail storms, which made it kind of dangerous to go out because you never knew when you would be caught in one. 
So the other day I was, um, and so we had a lot of, like I said, a lot of haze from all the smoke. And the other day I, I looked out my window and I could see Pikes Peak just clear as day. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is the day to go out and get video. So I jumped in my car and drove through the park and uh, took some really great pictures and video. Now, what you're going to see is not the entire park. There are tons of walking trails, uh, horseback riding trails. You can even do some rock climbing. But I went through basically into the entrance through the main course of the um, the drive, and which brings you out to Manitou Springs, which is a, a little town just on the other side of Garden of the Gods. And it's a neat town, so if you're ever out this way, you can easily incorporate a drive and a, a, some activities at Garden of the Gods and then go into Manitou Springs where there's tons of restaurants and neat places to see. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. And then I turned around and uh, uh, took you through the trading post, which is, it, it was a huge place, but if you, you know, want to grab a bite to eat or they have a, a, had a beautiful um, outside uh, deck to uh, enjoy nature and enjoy your food. And there was your usual souvenirs and some fudge and candy and some beautiful artwork and neat things like that to, uh, to enjoy. So make sure you stop by the trading post. And then on the way out, I took a picture. It's actually not in the park itself, but just on the outside, there is the um, information center, which has a lot of really interesting information about the history of the park. So stop there before or after, but make sure you stop by the information center too. So enjoy the video of Garden of the Gods. And when we come back, I will share some of my spinning with you that I did uh, during Tour de Fleece and also the crochet project that I've been talking about. So um, enjoy and I will see you in a few.
So hi and welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that video. So I um, wanted to mention the Balancing Rock um, is a place that you saw a lot of people walking around and crawling around there. That is a, a major stop. We used to take our kids there all the time and would take pictures of them um, holding up the rock. And uh, we just, that was um, a, a great place to go um, for many years. Um, just a word of warning if you do decide to go take your kids or even yourself. Um, there's a lot of loose gravel around that area, so always bring a box of band-aids because I did go through a few boxes um, every time we went. But uh, yeah, the footing can be a little treacherous sometimes with the loose gravel on the rocks. So just a word of warning. Anyway, so now I'm going to get to the um, the spinning that I did for Tour de Fleece. Now this was my first Tour de Fleece. I didn't really, um, I did it just for fun. It was just more of a, a reason or an excuse to spin, take a break from knitting and spin. And um, several of the yarns that I used came from this Light of Fiber Festival that I went to last year. And I found this one booth that had these amazing six ounce braids and I think I shared I shared uh, several of them with you on Instagram and then uh, so I'll share them with you now but this was the first one that I spun and I lost the tag so I don't know what it's called the colorway but it was uh, a speckled braid so um, there was a lot of white that helped kind of mute um, some of the colors but um, this is how it came out. I'm really happy with this. This is a pretty much a heavy fingering to sport weight that I ended up uh, with. Um, I Navajo plied this one on my wheel. Navajo ply is basically a three ply yarn using uh, one strand of um, uh, fiber. So um, the six ounce uh, braid actually fit very nicely on my, I, I, I uh, spin with an Ashford Kiwi too, and the uh, spindle actually hold, held very easily all six ounces of the single ply, and then I just uh, Navajo plied from there. And this came out to, this is a 100% Merino, and it came out to about 350 yards total. So that's the first one that I did. The second one was also, I, did, I don't know if I mentioned, this is from the 100 Sheep, which is a local yarn dyer. Uh, she dyes yarn and uh, fiber, like myself. Um, and she does trade shows, which are the, the uh, yarn shows, the, the festivals and the um, booths, which I don't do, maybe eventually, but that's a lot of work that I'm not sure I want to get into right now. Uh, but this one I did find the color band for, and this one was called uh, Deep Deep, and so with various shades of blue and teal. And once again, I Navajo plied this one and came out to pretty much, uh, I think this one actually was more of a sport weight, um, but I got about the same yardage as I did from the um, um, speckled one. And I'm thinking that these might be, I have to double check the yardage, but I think these might be enough to actually make a, um, a shawl. I could either put the two together or do one separately. We'll see how much yarn that I have. And then the third one that I did um, is actually a, again, 100th sheep. And this is a BFL um, silk that my husband won during uh, through one of the auctions that they have uh, at the Salida Fiber Festival. And honestly, it's not um, a color that I probably would have picked out myself, but I'm really happy with the way this came out. I think the fiber is a little more masculine, so since he won this for me, um, I think that I will uh, make him something with this. This one, I did a uh, two-ply. I did not do a Navajo ply, and I got uh, about 532 yards of a fingering, pretty much a true fingering weight on this one. So those are my three six ounce braids that I uh, spun during um, the Tour de Fleece. 
And then my final one is a Targi, four ounces of Targi that I picked up at uh, Yarn Durango uh, this past spring. And this one is, uh, it's by Mountain Colors, and uh, this is four ounces of two-ply and um, 382 yards. So that is my, um, and once again, I think this is a fingering, fingering to heavy fingering weight. So um, one thing about Targi, I was a joy to spin, and... It was, yeah, it was just, it was just 100% Targi, no, no other nylon or anything like that. But it's a very bouncy um, fiber. It's got a lot of uh, memory to it. And uh, it was just a very easy spin and the colors are just gorgeous. So I'm really happy with this one. I haven't figured out whether or not I'm going to make it a project or just exactly what. But I just, I really enjoyed my spin um, during the... Um, de fleece. So next coming up is Spinzilla and I have already got my fiber picked out for that um, but that's that's a whole other thing. I did want to share before I get to the crochet is that uh, last episode I uh, was talking about um, doing better about um, uh, keeping records of my yarn and my and my spinning and my patterns I'm, and I haven't done that yet it's just been a crazy couple of months but I'm going to focus on that this winter and hopefully even uh, start a Ravelry page for this podcast um, but this beautiful fiber or this yarn that I shared last time and I was trying to remember the name of it it I did remember this was from um, and of course now it just escaped me um, Zen, Zen Garden Yarns, and this was one of her um, one-of-a-kind uh, colorways, um, but it does have uh, silk and cashmere as well as wool in this, so that's why it's so soft and just beautiful, and I definitely am going to find another project for this, but once again, this was Zen Garden, and uh, she has her own uh, website. Uh, I don't think she sells on Etsy. So that's it for um, yarn um, and knitting and spinning. So now on to crochet. So last episode I mentioned that um, I have a stitchers group that I formed about 10 years ago and have some wonderful people in that group, none of the, whom are um, as, um, I guess, on the same level of interest and skill that I'm at, which is one of the reasons why I really enjoy watching some of the podcasts because it, I, some of these podcasters, some of them way younger than me, some of whom have been knitting for only three or four years, um, have really inspired me to um, do more and do better. And I have learned so much. And so I kind of have, I have this group for me to share those same skills and uh, um, information with them and so uh, but there are some wonderful people that are you know here and close by and we just you know just love socializing with them um, but uh, one of the ladies had recently lost her husband and so we I uh, decided to um, uh, organize a project to give her a blanket similar to the one that was given to me when my son was killed. And so uh, while we were putting the blanket together, her mother, who was like 95, also passed away. So even more fitting that we made this blanket for her because she's a, um, other than her kids who live elsewhere, she's essentially alone now. So, um, but she's got us. Anyway, um, so most of the people in the group um, found it easier to make uh, squares, uh, crochet. We have a few that um, um, knitted. Um, but anyway, she's a crocheter. So uh, anyway, I'll stop talking and just show you the blanket. What we did is, is that um, they're 14 inch granny squares. And this is one of them. And everybody did um, a square or um, several squares. And then we Put them all together. They're 14 inch squares and then once we collected 
all the squares, and most of these are literally granny squares. Um, so here's a, another one that's granny square. And then I did one, this was one of mine, and it's upside down, so I'll try to show it right side up, but it's a, uh, this is a filet, filet crochet. And I don't know if you can see, but there's actually, it's a heart there in the middle. And then another solid color granny square. And then, so we had, some people donated more than one square, so we have a couple that are the same color. These two are the same color scheme, but she um, put the colors in a slightly different order. So anyway, that this is only half the blanket. Um, one of the ladies and I uh, decided to split the work because it was quite a bit of work um, to add uh, a neutral border to all the squares and then stitch them together. And then, so she took half and I took half. And then we're, um, my job is to uh, stitch the two halves together. So this was the, uh, that was the half that uh, she worked on. And then this was the half that I worked on. And so this one is actually, it's not a granny square. It's actually just double crochet um, back and forth. And then this was a, oh, this is actually, surprisingly, this is actually the right side of this pattern. Everybody thought that this was the right side of the pattern. And I don't, I did not write it down on my notes, so I will put it on the screen. This was a um, uh, pattern that was uh, donated by one of our uh, college-aged uh, members, and uh, she got this off of a Ravelry uh, page, and she had only been crocheting for about two, three years. And so this is another uh, of the double, the multiple donations. This was another um, granny square that I contributed. And this is, uh, this is a, a unique crochet pattern. I don't know if you can see or not. Um, I forgot the name of the stitch. I'm going to put that also in the notes for you. And then she also, the same person who did this square, did this granny square. And I just love the way she put her colors together. Just, just, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I would not have chosen <laughs> these colors to put together, but I just think it's just gorgeous. And I'm going to try to emulate what she did. So anyway, and she also did this one too. Like I said, these are the two halves of the blanket and I think it makes a nice, a really, it will make a really substantial and beautiful blanket for um, our friend. And uh, I will take a picture of the entire blanket um, once it's all stitched together and uh, share that with you on the next video actually probably read the video after because we are not presenting this to her until our next meeting which is going to be on september 15th and i am planning on actually not waiting another month two months or even a month for my next uh video podcast because um, i'm planning on going to the salida fiber festival which is september 8th and 9th um so uh almost two weeks from now and yeah no only a week from now a little over a week from now so Salida Fiber Festival and the Yarn Along the Rockies Yarn Crawl is my Christmas that is when I just you know I am just a kid in a candy store when it comes to going to those two events so really looking forward to that and I will share um, some video and pictures of the Salida Fiber Festival with you the next time I see you. So until then, have a wonderful knitting experience and uh, I will see you then.